and there's the chaos. Yep, there it is, the second chicane. You know, all of the wings uh, that, that went flying there. I just got distracted. And there's even more chaos coming out of the second Lesmo. Replay of the start with Villeneuve, and I've lost my words because they didn't set a lap in qualifying, but yet, Daniel Apt and Nico Prost start first and second. There's D'Ambrosio, the leader of the wounded cars. He is coming into the pits, along with um, seven others. Actually, everyone who got involved in the crash has come into the pits, apart from Bruno Senna. Uh, Villeneuve, for the integrity of this race, is going to have to get past Prost and Apt. If either Prost or Apt win this race because they cheated, we can't have that happening. So Villeneuve is going to get the undercut. We sh this should see him come out in the lead of the race. we got Freins coming in, PK coming in, and what on earth has Freins done? Come on, what's taking us so long? Come on, we just need to exit the pit box. Come on, Nico Cross has got past us. I'm not surprised, and so is jean Eric Verne. But, yeah, they came out ahead of us. We didn't see them go past. That's because they were so far ahead. As you can see, there's even Nathaniel Burton, who lost his rear wing, has come out ahead of Prost, us, uh, Verne, and ourselves. He started on pole position when he didn't set a lap in qualifying, and because of that, he's cheated, but he's he's won the Italian e -pre. Um... Fair enough, well, whatever. Um, anyway, more interestingly, Robin Frines has come from scoring no points this series to 18. Nelson PK third. You know, let's just, let's just forget Daniel Apt. Right then, so hey guys, it's PSL here, and I'm here for the seventh episode in this Formula E series on Formula 1 tracks. We're here at Monaco, and obviously the first year, or the first season of Formula E, um, they wrapped Monaco, but it was a shortened version of the Monaco street circuit. This time we're using the full layout of Monaco, uh, just like in Formula 1, hence how it's Formula E on Formula 1 tracks. Um, here is a screen I haven't actually shown you guys all series. So we've got the damage multiplier on 50% for this race, which is about 20% lower than usual. But AI aggression is only on 15%. Um, normally it's on about 60%. It's... Really, honestly, the AI just did not want to complete this race. We had to put the settings on so low uh, just to even get the AI to just complete a lap. It honestly was quite ridiculous, really. Um, but yeah, in qualifying, we're going to end up our, uh, finish our lap, and we're going to do, in the 140s, our 142. At the moment, that's the quickest time of Daniel Lap, where we're nearly a second up on Daniel Lap there. And, well, that's a good lap. As you can see, going up the hill which is something Formula E hasn't ever seen, actually. Um, so, yeah, so that's that. And we actually end qualifying in pole position. So that's the first time we've done that all season. Obviously, we nearly did it in Canada. Uh, we got Loic Duval, Sarazan. We, you know, we got lots of championship rivals actually right up behind us. Our, our teammate, jean Eric Vern, right at the back. So well done, Vern. But anyway, let's just head off to what technically is the second e Prix at Monaco. So, Formula E has had a pretty interesting history at Monaco in the past. That was the 2015 race. Would a 2016 race be any better as the lights are out and away we go? And it looks like Sandberg's got a pretty decent start, but Loic Duval has got the inside line going into Santa Vod, And he's also slightly ahead. He actually shoves us into the wall there. And obviously, bearing in mind, Loic Duval is a serious championship contender. And so are we. So, you know, no love lost between the both of us there. But going up the hill, obviously, to completely uncharted waters for Formula E, going into Massonet, and we give Duval a taste of his own medicine, shove him out wide just a tiny little bit, and we are currently leading the Monaco e Prix from Duval, de Grassi, Sarazan. And it looks like actually the top four, we're kind of pulling away from everyone else, really. Yeah, it does certainly seem like it. Going into the Lowe's hairpin, obviously the most iconic corner in Formula 1. Formula E has never been here until now, and as you can see, yeah, the top four really pulling out. Uh, from the man in fifth place, which currently is Jacques Villeneuve. And so we're coming on to the start of the 
once we get there. So, yep, start of the third lap, and we are 4.8, well, close, very close to five seconds ahead of Loic Duval. So, our pace at Monaco has been absolutely astonishing. You look at some tracks like Hockenheim this series, we didn't really have much pace compared to the AI, but right now, we're absolutely wiping the floor of the AI. And as you see, going into Portier, we do tap the wall slightly. No damage to our car, luckily, but you can see that Loic Duval is visibly less than five seconds. The gap between us and uh, Duval is visibly less than five seconds. Going into the Nouvelle Chicane, and we've actually locked up there. We've run wider. We've had to go over the speed humps or the sausage curbs, whatever you want to call them. Um, and as you can see, Duval is now right on the back of us. And so is Degrassi, so is Sarazan. And going into Tabak, we've run wide, and it looks like Duval's got past us. So is Degrassi. And there's Villeneuve behind. Villeneuve has lost his front wing. He's nearly piled into the barrier as we get past Degrassi. It is all kicking off right now. So we got past Degrassi. Look at our front tyres. Absolutely burning hot. Duval is in the lead, and it's a full course yellow. Safety car is coming out, so there has been chaos behind. Probably something Villeneuve caused, you know, in the swimming pool section. We'll have to find out, but look at those front tyres. After four laps, they have been destroyed. It's it's almost like we saw in Hungary, but in Hungary, I turned off the tyre wear. This race, I didn't because I didn't realise tyre wear was an issue. But as you can see, the, uh, the hideous brown Vauxhall Astra has come out. Um, not a BMW i8 like in Formula E. I don't know why we've got this hideous Astra, but... There you go. Anyway, so here's what forced uh, forced the safety car to come out. So that's Nico Prost and what on earth has happened there? It's just been... I can't even describe what's happened. I mean, he clipped the wall coming into the swimming pool section. And it's just been Armageddon. I mean, I don't I don't even know what's happened. Uh, so that's Nico Prost. He's only got two wheels in his car. He is out of the race. Um, and now we're going to be seeing from Heidfeld's perspective... He was, uh, well, he's in 14th at this point. So let's, uh, Prost clips the wall. So does Heifeld. Heifeld goes all over the place, defying the laws of physics, goes through the barrier, and cuts up to Costa. And bearing in mind, there's all sorts of chaos behind Heifeld. In total, six cars retired there. Nico Prost, Nick Heifeld, Jerome D'Ambrosio, Oliver Turvey, Robin Frines, and Nelson Piquet, all retired at the swimming pool section. So his, to Costa, he doesn't retire, but as you can see, Heifeld defies the laws of physics at least three times in ten seconds, and he has gone, well, he's just phased in front of DaCosta, and DaCosta's still in the race, but he's going to have to come into the pits to replace his front wing. Apart from the fact he can't now, because uh, because the pit lane's closed uh, for the time being. As you can see, the pits are open to lead lap vehicles, so will we come into the pits? I'm basically just going to follow Duval at this point, and Duval isn't. Okay, so we're going to stay out, so is Duval... I think Degrassi is, judging by the timing. So Sarazan and Villeneuve, I, no, I think Villeneuve's come in. It seems like on the timing screens, Villeneuve has come in as well. I should look behind. As you can see, the top four have stayed out, but fifth and back have come into the pits because, well, loads of people have got damage, really. In fact, I think almost everyone who's come into the pits has got damage of some kind. So, you know, um, yeah, it was quite, quite an interesting uh, fourth lap where all that chaos happened. And as you can see, coming into the pits, to cost obviously to replace his front wing. And okay, okay. Well, that was certainly unfortunate for De Costa there. Uh, Silvestro did a magic trick and just phased in front of uh, in front of De Costa there. So both of those guys are out. Um, and Buemi, he's inside John Eric Vern. Slight weird glitch and. It's deja vu, isn't it? It's just like in Silverstone. We haven't seen this for a while, but he's gone to the pit wall. Buemi is out. Um, even the pit lane isn't safe, really. This race, seemingly. And the safety car is still out, honestly. Just took its bittersweet time for that Astra to get out of the way. It's such a hideous car. And, you know, as someone who's uh, who, as someone who's born in Luton, I think I'm allowed to say that that Astra, pretty disgusting. And it's also not even a nice colour. But anyway, the race is... Back underway. Well, there's the green flag. And the, for some reason, the second the green flag comes out, Duval breaks. I was deliberately not passing Duval until we got to the start-finish line. But he bro he broke there. Look how far behind he is. But, I mean, look, it's still the same order. It's still ourselves, Duval, Degrassi, Sarazan, Villeneuve. Everyone who came to the pits has now joined onto the back of the train. So, you know, it's, um, it's just the... However many cars are left, actually. I think nine cars are left at this point. Um... 
So yeah, quite an interesting race. And there's Vern. Vern came into the pits a billion times this race. Wait, he I think he genuinely came into the pits about four times. There's Silvestro still sitting in a pit box. Um, I don't know why the Silvestro still sat there. But Vern came into the pits again. He, I swear he came into the pits about four times this race. So, you know, he's kind of away from this train, actually. I think he's the only person who's not in the train of, with the top eight. And Fern, he's just retired himself. He's gone into the wall exactly the same as Buemi did. And it's just stupid. But what's this? Jean-Eric Fern has found reverse gear. Well done, Jean-Eric Fern. The first driver this series to find out where the reverse gear is. And Jean-Eric Fern is carrying on this race. Well done, Fern. He's... Oh, the AI, they're getting smarter. Jean-Eric Fern, well done. You're... You're keeping Virgin alive in the team's championship. And anyway, the battle for third place between Degrassi and Sarazan going into the Nouvelle Chicane. And Sarazan's going to try and move around the outside, but he's gone into the back of Degrassi. Sarazan has lost his front wing, so he is going to have to come into the pits. So, you know, not really that good for him. Uh, but obviously, Jack Villeneuve is now looking to take Degrassi. I mean, Sarazan's got past Degrassi, but Sarazan's going to have to come into the pits. Villeneuve's going to try and make a move on Degrassi. Um... Coming out of Raskas, he nearly did it. And going into Anthony Nogues, he's lost his front wing as well. So just as Sarazan comes into the pits, Villeneuve is going to need to come into the pits. That is bad for Venturi. But luckily, uh, Sarazan came into the pits on lap 9. He just about won't have to do a two-stop. Just about. If he crashed a lap earlier, he'd have to do a two-stop. Anyway, we're coming up to lap 11. Uh, the fuel has pretty much ran out at this point. Our front tyres are completely dead. That's why... We've got Degrassi all over the back of us. And as you can see, just coming into Raskas, our tyres, they've just got nothing in them. It's actually good that the safety car came out. It gave our tyres a chance to cool. Honestly, that safety car saved us in so many ways. Um, anyway, we come into the pit. So does Degrassi. So does Duval. And we'll get some new tyres on. And hopefully, hopefully th these tyres won't melt. Um, anyway, it's 65 second pit stop. And we're coming out. And it looks like Degrassi's got out ahead of us. But what about Duval? Duval still stopped. And Duval has come out ahead of us. That's been a theme this entire series. The AI generally seem to have shorter pit stops than I do. I don't quite know why that is. But anyway, we are out in our last place, actually. Last of all, well, last of the runners, which is ninth place. Um, so things, things aren't really looking too good at the moment. It's looking about as good as it did in Zandvoort, really. Where I also finished ninth and last of the finishers. Anyway, this is the battle... In the front three, this is, um, this is, uh, who is this? Let me, I'll just look. Daniel Abt, Bruno Senna, and Nathaniel Burton. These people came into the pits, uh, when we had the full course yellow, but they, they didn't get subsequent damage like Villeneuve and Sarazan and Vern did. So they're still out, but they will have to come into the pits again. So this is the front three, but they're coming into the pits again. And what on earth has Bruno Senna done? Bruno Senna's just retired, and so is Daniel Abt there. So that's first and second out of the race. Berton's lost his front wing. It's actually not that big of a loss for Berton because, as I said, all three of those guys had to come into the pits again anyway because they pit on lap five. The fuel can only do 11 laps. Jacques Villeneuve gets past. We're waiting for Berton to come out. Obviously, he was in first. It'd be pretty bad if he comes out, like, at the back with us. I don't know if he will. I mean, he was way in the lead, you know, with uh, with the train of the others. And there's Sarazan exiting the pits. And Sarazan has got out ahead... Of um of the Faniel Burton and no one has to stop again unless they have damage, but no one has to stop again for fuel. Sarazan just about will have enough fuel to make it to the end of the race because he pitted on lap nine. So it's a Venturi one two, Burton third, uh Jean Eric Verne in fourth, Degrassi fifth, Duval sixth, and Sam Bird in seventh. And we're right up behind Duval. We need to get past these guys quickly while our tyres haven't overheated. We get past Duval. And, you know, the tyres overheating is a big issue. I think the reason everybody crashed at um, at the swimming pool chicane is because their tyres have overheated. I think everybody suffered with understeer. For me, I just lost pace. For the AI, it just meant they crashed at the swimming pool chicane. Because you look, everybody who crashed at the swimming pool chicane, uh, chicane crashed at the end or near the end of their stint. Um, and anyway, we do get past the grassy going into the Lowe's hairpin or coming out of the Lowe's hairpin. So we're up into fifth place, which is good. We just now need to hold track position. Jean Eric Verne 7 seconds ahead. Burton is 17 seconds ahead. There's no way we're going to catch them. There's Jean Eric Verne. He's going to score some good points for DS Virgin Racing at the moment. And what on earth has he done? He has rolled it and he's gone into some spectators. Jean Eric Verne 
has wiped out some spectators. He's upside down. He's out of the race. He's made the same mistake as everyone else at the swimming pool chicane. And we should just see that we're just following with Degrassi at this point. We should just see his yellow flags here. And Degrassi has made the same mistake. Duval tries to go through. And Degrassi drives out in front of Loic Duval. What on earth has happened this race? Let's just look at it on board from Loic Duval. So Duval's just going about his business, you know, as, as championship contenders do, you know, pulling in a solid drive. But Degrassi just goes out straight in front of him. Duval, an innocent bystander. Um, wow. So that means there's only four runners left this race. It's remarkable, honestly. Um, and just going on a few laps later, while our tyres are dead, so is our suspension, because look, I don't think this wheelie would have done our suspension much good. Um, slight little glitch there, I just thought I'd put that in, because uh, it gave me a heart attack uh, while I was racing. I honestly thought, I thought, no, I don't want to retire. Um, because, you know, everyone else has retired. Anyway, last lap of the race, not really a lot happened. I'll tell you what did happen. Sarazan, who was miles behind Villeneuve, He's caught up a lot. He really has. I mean, this is Sarazan all over the back. And, oh, my word, you do not want to be management at Venturi right now. Just please do not pile it into the wall, you two. Venturi are on for a 1-2 at the moment. Going into the swimming pool chicane, please don't tell me they crash it. Villeneuve's gone through. So is Sarazan coming out the exit. And they are fine. Villeneuve is still holding first place. But is Sarazan going to get first place? Are they going to force each other into the wall at Raskas? Oh, and Sarazan, he's going for a move. He's got the inside line, and they just about kept each other out of the wall. Sarazan going into Anthony Noakes. He's got the inside line. He isn't far enough ahead. Villeneuve clips the wall. Mercifully, no damage. And it's going to be a Venturi 1-2 at Monaco. The Monaco-based team has taken a 1-2. Villeneuve in first. Sarazan second. That is, that is such a dream story. The, the Monaco-based team has taken a 1-2 at Monaco. Fantastic stuff. Villeneuve first, Sarazan second. Nathaniel Burton, the only person to stay out of chaos this race, aside from ourselves. He comes in third, rightly deserved, because he has been stupid enough, or he's been clever enough not to crash it, really, whereas everyone else has been unfortunate to have crashed it. And as you can see, our front tyres, look at our front left, completely destroyed. Honestly, we saw uh, when we came out of the pits, Burton was about 17 seconds ahead of us. At this point, well, he pretty much lapped us. He's about... I, genu I think at this point he's about 53 seconds ahead of us. He's about half a lap ahead because our front tyres are destroyed. But despite that, because everyone crashed, we got fourth place, the last finisher. So we've had just as many finishers in this race as we did at the 1996 Monaco Grand Prix. Uh, the fastest lap, as you can see, you saw it briefly there. We'll get it back up. The fastest lap, Sarazan. No surprise there. Sarazan, so quick at the end of the race. Um, it obviously wasn't going to meet up the fastest lap because the front tyres, the overheating was horrific. As I said, it's like we saw um, at Hungary. Well, it's what we would have seen at Hungary by turn off the tyre wear then. Anyway, as you can see, four finishers, Villeneuve, Sarazan, Burton, Bird. Vern finished in fifth because he crashed a few feet ahead of Duval and Degrassi, respectively. Uh, Silvestro is still technically a runner, even though she only has three wheels, was stuck in the pit lane and 15 laps down. And honestly... That race was just pandemonia. Yeah. Right then, so on to the Drivers' Championship. Sam Bird, because I've been consistent compared to the AI, ever since Hockenheim, really, I've been consistent. I'm 14 points ahead of the driver in second, which is Sarazan, our big rival from Hungary, Sarazan. He has moved up from 8th to 2nd with his second place here today. Jean-Eric Verne, my teammate, is in third. Fantastic stuff there. Nelson Piquet, who was one point behind me going into this race because he scored no points, he's down in 4th. Onto the team's championship and Virgin was still leading the team's championship thanks to me getting 4th and jean oc Verne getting 5th. It's been quite a theme with this series so far is Sam Bird and jean oc Verne, we're not getting amazing results but we're getting consistently decent results so we're not constantly getting podiums in that but both of us are consistent, both of us are scoring decent points on a regular basis and that's why we're both high up in the drivers championship and that's why Virgin are leading the team's championship. With Venturi unsurprisingly in second after their 1-2 here, they've moved up from 4th to 2nd. The interesting thing is Next EV, Dragon Racing and Team Aguri are all on 74 points. But anyway guys, I hope you enjoyed this episode. Be sure to leave a like, comment and next time we're at Spa Francorchamps in Belgium, the 2015 layout of Spa. 
I could have used all sorts of layouts of spa, you know, the one with the old final sector, uh, the really old one which is, you know, completely different to the spa as we know it now, the massive old layout of a uh, spa. I could have used that, but I thought, you know, we'll use the 2015 layout. Since we're going to use the Nordschleife in the race after Belgium, I kind of want an easy Belgian Grand Prix. So anyway, guys, I'll see you next time at the 2015 layout of Spa-Francorchamps. So I'll see you then.